Hey, welcome back. And today we got a packed full video of all different types of information that you really need to know and need to really be paying attention to. We're going to be starting off. We're going to be talking about uh, North Korea and that little guy over there. Well, he's been really busy and he's been building a lot of different things that we need to be really aware of and uh you know where he goes with this and how many he has and the whole nine yards we're also going to be talking about what the united states did fire off just a few days ago maybe you all didn't know but yep they were out there they're playing the game and we're going to be talking about the whole balloon situation here we're going to show you a couple of maps and everything else and what has been conspiring over that whole thing uh, I got a couple of pictures here and some articles we're going to be looking at and show you what they've been pulling up. And, you know, it's just amazing, isn't it? That these things made it all the way across. And now they're saying that there's been, you know, all these other balloons that's done it and everything else. And then also, you know, on Friday afternoon at 1.45 p.m., they did something. The United States did something. We don't know exactly what yet. But you got to stay tuned because you gotta really know about that one. Then, later on in the day, the United States government put some sanctions on China. And what areas did they hit? There's six of them because of this whole balloon thing. You know, and I'm going to list off the companies. And one of them is very interesting because it is really all on who is owning it we also do have a date now uh for russia they are going to be shooting off their satan 2 missile between these dates and well here we go folks they want to parade to the world just like everybody else is only they're going to show you what they're going to do and i'm going to show you where they're going to land this thing and blow it up and it's not too far from home. All right. We're also going to be talking about what is really going on in Ukraine, what else they need and everything else. You know, they constantly got their hands out. And I'm going to guess we're going to be handing over more and more goodies, which is just going to be escalating the whole bad situation that we are in right now. I'm going to read you a couple of things from Defense Secretary Robert Gates, what he said during the uh, online form uh, that was posted on the Washington Post. You really want to stay tuned for that one. Now we're also going to be talking about how many troops and what they are doing in Russia. To in, They're just trying to build up as much as they can and put together as many people and men and everything else. They don't care who it is anymore. And they want to have a huge offensive coming soon to Ukraine. We're going to be fact-checking this uh, boots on the ground in Ukraine. And we're going to see what that had to say. We're also going to be talking about what are those billionaires up to and why does it matter to you and me? Pay attention, folks. They know something we don't. And we need to make sure that we're following their lead. And then we're going to end on something that has been taking place. I'm sure a lot of people have heard about it. And we have updated numbers and everything from Turkey and Syria on the earthquakes and that whole sad scenario that is taking place. So I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Stay tuned. We're going to get going on this. So as you can all see what is going on here, these photos were taken back in January 2021 in a military parade in North Korea. Look at the size of the missiles and make sure you take note of the size of these trucks. All right. Now, fast forward to 2023 and what do we have? A lot bigger missiles and a lot bigger trucks. 
All right, so they have been very busy on building up their military might as far as nuclear arms. They know this is the answer to all their problems, right? <laughs> Wrong. You know, I mean, they are really starting to ramp up what they do have. We need to be paying close attention to this because as you can see, these are the missiles that they have. These are the ones that we have to pay attention to, the 14, 15, and 17, because those can reach out and touch us all the way over here to the east coast of the United States of America. Now, the top question we all have to be asking ourselves is, is who is funding all of this? Who is behind this? Because we all know that North Korea is the most sanctioned country in the world. They make no money off anything. All right, so how did they go from this to this in a matter of two years? And they have 17 of these bad boys, okay? So one has to ask themselves, who's funding this? Russia, China, both of them? Maybe they're both contributing into getting them all basically built up with nuclear arms, you know? They're all kind of right over there in the same province. You got China, Russia, and then you have North Korea. So you got the three bad guys all in one area. That could be a bad thing. So now we actually did something too this past week. We launched the Minuteman 3. Now they were supposed to do this some time ago, but they turned around and they postponed that because of all the issues and stuff that were going on in Taiwan. But they did take and they fired this bad boy off. You know what I'm saying? And let's just take a little look here. As you can see, as we're going to watch here, the door opens. And they fire it off. And it explodes. Takes off. And then you see it going through the sky. Now this was our Minuteman 3. It's a very high, fast pace missile system. Supposedly... They're saying that it can take out the Satan 2 missile of Russia. Hopefully we don't have to find out if they're right or if they're wrong. Now let's talk about these balloons real quick. Now the whole thing with this is, and people comment below please if you would. All right, the whole thing with this is this balloon, the first one that came across. Now they're saying that there's been several over the years, but this one here came across, went through Alaska, came right down through, you know, Montana, Wyoming, North Dakota, Colorado, went over and went off the East Coast, and that's where they shot the thing down after it was already going over all our different nuclear sites out there. But, you know, why is it it took them so long to do that? Because this is some of the stuff that they're recovering right now and everything else. They're still under recovery mission. Once they get it all, hopefully they can piece it all back together, find out what it is, what it was doing, what it took, and all this kind of stuff. And hopefully we'll have some answers. But, and again, let's not hold your breath, folks. But the question still stands. All right. On Friday at 1.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the U.S. shot down an unidentified object Friday over frozen waters near Alaska at the order of the president. Less than one week after shooting down a Chinese spy balloon off the East Coast. Now, the reason they did that was, is right down here it says, this object was flying at an altitude of about 40,000 feet. They are saying that this object was the size of a small car. It was really lower than the 65,000 foot uh, Chinese spy balloon that they had to shoot down. All right, so it's 25,000 feet lower. And it posed a reasonable threat to the safety of civilian flights because now you're within the flight pattern here, right? The Pentagon first detected the object Thursday evening by ground radar and shot it down out of an abundance of caution. And they shot it down Friday at 1.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, here's where I want people to comment. How is it that they could pick this thing up with no problems whatsoever? They knew it was coming. Boom. As soon as it got in here, they shot it down. Whereas in the other one that was really big, they couldn't see that on our radar. Now, I'm no expert on the radar system and everything else. I don't know if it reaches up as high as 60,000 feet. I would think the military would have something up there that can 
pick these things up. You know what I'm saying? Especially if it has any type of metal components or anything to it, you think it would be picking the system up or something. So you people comment what you think on that one. Later on Friday, they also did put in the sanctions against six Chinese firms. All right. Now, the interesting thing was, is when I tried to find any information out on any of these firms, um, I was struck out. Uh, Wikipedia didn't have anything. You couldn't find anything on the Internet, really anything. But you could on this one right here. China Electronics Technology Group Corporation 48th Research Institute. Now, what you find on that is, which is very interesting, is this section right here, okay? Basically, this company is a Chinese state-owned company established back in 2002, and it basically builds and fields more uh, items such as communications equipment, computers, electronic equipment, IT infrastructure, networks, software development, research services, investments, and asset management for civilian and military applications that's very key here folks so remember that it was founded with the goal of leveraging civilian electronics for the benefit of the people's libertation army now this thing has become the third largest electronics and it company in china because it is absorbing all these other different high-tech companies and the big thing you really want to know is, is right over here in this group, you come right down here to the bottom where it says owner. Guess who? The Chinese government. Yes. So that explains why the Chinese government is basically buying up all these other companies and stuff because they want all the technology to themselves. They don't want this to be shared throughout any other parts of the world. Now, Russia has announced that the Satan II missile is going to be launched between February 15th and the 25th. They're going to be doing exercises at that point um, with the uh, African and the Chinese, and they're doing these different types of drills, exercises, and everything else, just like we do with all these other countries. Uh, it's nothing new. It's been going on for a long time. But they're going to be firing off this missile, and where do you think that missile is going to go, folks? Well, wait till you see. So they're going to be firing this thing off, and they do believe that it's going to be taking off and going through from the west of Russia, and they're going to fly it all the way to the east of Russia, which I'm going to show you right here. Now, this little island in Russia, right off of Russia, this is all Russia over here. This is where they drop all their bombs. They like to do that. And the reason why is, okay, so supposedly... They're going to be firing this thing off from somewhere over here in this region. And it's going to go all the way over here to this region and explode. Now, does anybody see how close this is to Alaska? Let me zoom in a little. Oh, look at that. There's Alaska. There's where the bomb's going to drop. Pretty close, huh? I think that's something we really need to be paying attention to here. Stuff's starting to get a little close to home. And I think Russia is doing that on purpose to send a message. So maybe we need to send one back. Just saying, folks. Now, Ukraine. Yep, we're going to be sending, uh, as of two Fridays ago, we're going to be sending another $2.1 billion weapons package to Ukraine. They are begging for everything. Um, they are going to be getting the tanks. They want the F-16s too. But let's hear what the defense guy had to say about all this kind of stuff. Now, something to really pay attention to before we get to what uh, Mr. Defense Secretary Robert Gates had to say and to the Washington Post. Um, we can't, you know, I mean, if Russia, if there's any way that Russia can reclaim Crimea, all right, this is going to be a big, huge blow to Russia. And if there's any way that Ukraine can go in and reclaim Crimea and retake that back over, this is going to throw a whole new switch to this war because that's where Putin said that he would probably look at using nuclear weapons on Ukraine 
And I feel if that does take place, we're going to be opening up a whole nother storybook of this complete mess that we are in right now. This uh, Defense Secretary, Robert Gates, all right, he says he believes Ukraine could take back control of the Donbass region and Crimea, too, in that, in that respect, if you read the whole article. Um, it is seen more than eight years of fighting after the Kremlin Oplin back separatists there with men, equipment, and financial support, and it was illegally annexed to Crimea. So basically, you know, they took it and they weren't supposed to and they had other people that were doing it and then they claimed all the victory. The critical issue for Ukraine is how quickly United States and NATO allies can get equipment like tanks and other armored vehicles into the country. We ought to be airlifting some of that equipment to Poland right now to get it into the country. You know, we're, I, I think we're just, it's only a matter of time, folks, before something really bad is going to happen with us, uh, with us being so involved, with us having so much of our military might there, minus boots on the ground. And we're going to be discussing boots on the ground here in just a second, because I have a fact check for you on that one. Russia is already gauging the speed in which it can draft an additional 120,000 men, which would bring the number of new troops that need training and equipment to bolster defense and launch a counter offers to 500,000. They're already starting to push all these men and stuff. They're starting to build all along the eastern uh, side there, and they're looking to do a major defense, and they believe that this big Russian push could come as soon as the anniversary of February 24th which is coming up here real soon. The air defense systems that we have sent over there and everything else are taking them out and it is not allowing them to have superiority over the air. So in that token, he's saying that he doesn't believe at this point in time we need to be sending in F-16s, which is a good thing. The Ukrainian officials say Russia's military is massing hundreds of thousands of troops for a re renewed offense in the eastern Ukraine, set to begin as early as next week. This comes with heavy fighting and everything else that's been going on and, and you know, and all this trench warfare because that's basically, we've, we've gone back to like World War II and, and it's just amazing with the technology and how uh, Russia is still fighting like, uh, you know, we're in World War II or something here. Uh, here in the United States, the NATO Secretary General Jen uh, Stolenberg is in Washington, D.C. today for talks with senior Biden administrators. And uh, basically, his trip comes after a few days after he was at the U.N. Secretary General, who called for an end to the conflict in Ukraine, saying he fears the world is sleepwalking into a wider war. Now, you comment below if you think that we've already walked into that coming wider war, because I believe we have. I don't think there's any turning back for anybody right now, especially Putin, because he is not going to go down without doing something drastically. He's not going to lose without trying something. Now, what we also want to make sure that we are doing here, we're fact-checking boots on the ground. And it says, while the Pentagon briefing of the news media highlights the most direct role American personnel have played within Ukraine, to call it boots on the ground is an overstatement. This is coming from the Pentagon. Of course, they're saying it's an overstatement. We don't really have boots on the ground or anything else. A defense official said that the U.S. military was taking proactive steps to stop, you know, the division of U.S. provided weapons. All through added that there was no evidence that any such diversions were taking place. The team will be weapons experts with the aim of keeping tabs on the U.S. supply arms and the operation that does not involve American soldiers fighting alongside Ukraine forces. The inspectors will not be near the front line, the Pentagon said. And so far, with fact check, it shows they need more context to make sure this is true. They're not saying it's 100% true, 
They're also not saying it's false. They're leaning more towards true, but they want more information. Now, something we all need to be doing right now is paying attention to what's going on with all these billionaires and what they're doing. And they're buying up a bunkers, nuclear doomsday bunkers. Yes, I mean, they know something we don't. So this is a very, very good thing to really pay attention to. These people are spending up to like $14 million dollars into what is going on right now all right and this way here they can survive uh nuclear blast whatever it could be you know i mean look at the inside of some of these bunkers aren't they lovely i mean i'm sure we all can afford that yeah right all right so but there are some places where they're not too bad of price it just depends on what you can afford and everything else you can also turn your basements and stuff into a nuclear shelter too probably a lot cheaper than what it's going to cost this but you may not have that pool um, there are several different areas in this country. Uh, they are looking, uh, a lot of these, uh, billionaires are buying up different, uh, bunkers throughout the world. Um, actually they're buying them here in America. They're also buying them in Australia. They're also buying them over in Europe and, you know, they are getting it to wherever they need to be. So this way they have bunkers all over the place. Um, here in this country, we have this whole bunker community that is Fios. Now, it's a, it's a big area. These bunkers and stuff were built years ago. Now, here's a picture, all right? Now, they've turned these bunkers. This is into a community. They've turned these things into a community. They've redone them. They're really nice. And I've seen some of the prices on some of them are, you know, anywhere between... An, uh, 80,000 up to about 180,000. Um, there was a few of them that was a lot more, but you do have to kind of qualify and get on a waiting list because they have been selling really fast and they may be sold out by this point in time. You know, most of these do have about 2,500 square living space inside. Um, they do come, you know, you have your kitchen, your bathroom, the whole nine yards. is just like a house, only it's underground. Um, so one last thing that I really want people to really be thinking about right now, as of today, uh, they just upped the death toll in Turkey and Syria from those major earthquakes that they went through to over 25,000 people did. Um, the sad thing is, is out of that 25,000, most of them are women and children. So that is very sad what is taking place over there. And my heart and thoughts go out to all those people over there. If you did want to donate or anything like that, just make sure that you are going to a legitimate uh, site where you can donate if you if that you choose to do so. Um, if not, uh, at least just take uh, a few minutes out of your day or evening and just say a little prayer for all those people over there, especially the women and children especially the ones that did survive and lost everybody else in their family because it is really, really bad. So I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. We all really need to be paying attention to what's going on in this world and everything else and listen to the signs that are being told to us on a daily basis because the, the game is changing as we go along here. Every single day the game changes and we have to be prepared. The billionaires are all getting prepared for something they know a lot more what's going on out there than we will ever know. So let's take a little bit out of their playbook and see what we can't do to get our families prepared. And just in case something really crazy happens and maybe we can survive and be prepared to weather the aftermath. So I'm Survival Preparedness Beginners. I'm out.